In this video, we're going to review exponents. In mathematics, it's, it's empowering to recognize that the notation that we use has been developed by one or more people, often over a number of centuries, to just keep track of kind of a simple idea. That's, a, that's true for exponents as well, which is the notation we use today has been developed over a number of centuries. For example, we write 3 to the 4th power. 3 raised to the 4th power means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That power is saying how many times the base is going to be multiplied together. So essentially then, with this definition, we're thinking of that power as representing a counting number that's counting how many times the base gets multiplied together. When you've studied the exponents in the past, you looked at a long list of properties of exponents. Many of those properties come simply as a result of thinking of, uh, of exponent as counting the number of times that the base is multiplied. For example, think about three raised to the third power times three raised to the fourth power times three raised to the fifth power. That means that it's three times three times three times three. That's three to the fourth power, and then three times three times three times three times three. That's three to the fifth power. So that's going to mean that it's really the same thing as three to the ninth power. It's simply a matter of counting the number of factors of three that we have. This leads to the general property that b raised to the m power and b raised to the n power is going to be b to the m plus n power. It's just a matter of counting up how many times b is multiplied together. That's the way to remember that particular property. Think about 3 to the second power and all of that raised to the fourth power. Raising to the fourth power means that we've got 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared. That means that we've got four packages with two threes multiplied together in each one of those packages. Therefore, if we're counting up how many threes are multiplied together, there's four packages with two in each package. That's going to be two times four is the number of threes that are multiplied together. So in this case, three squared raised to the fourth power is going to mean that it's there are eight threes that are multiplied together or in other words, 3 to the 8th power. This leads to a general formula. If we have any base, b, raised to the m power, and all of that raised to the n power, then that's going to be equal to b raised to the m times n power. These five properties are reviewed nicely with Khan Academy. There's a link there um, to get you to that. Now, it's not unusual in mathematics for one simple idea to be examined and then try to expand that idea to a larger application. So first of all, let's try to expand the idea of exponents from counting numbers in the exponent. What, what could it mean for the exponent to be zero? The first property we considered when we were looking at exponents was, so three to the zero, times 3 to the second would have to be 3 to the 0 plus 2. So let's replace 3 to the 0 with x and try and solve this equation. Now, of course, that equation is just saying that 9x is equal to 9. And the only way that that can happen is for x to be equal to 1. But remember, what we were looking for here was to find out what x was. x, remember, is 3 to the 0 power. This leads to an expanded definition um, for exponents. We need to say that b raised to the 0 power is 1. So let's add that to another one of our properties of exponents. b to the 0 power is 1. Now there's a technical note here that we need to make. That is, what about 0 to the 0 power? 
Uh, some people say that that's indeterminate or it's undefined, and other people say that it, it should be equal to 1. You can read more about that in the uh, uh, MA note there. There's a link in the, in the handout. Now, there's two more cases that we need to examine. One is a negative exponents, and the other is fractional exponents. Again, we'll look at how we'll discover the meaning of each of these according to the first property that we looked at. So uh, let's consider uh, 3 to the negative 2 power. If you looked at 3 to the negative 2 times 3 to the second power, that would have to be 3 to the 0 power, in other words, 1. So if we were trying to find out what 3 to the negative 2 is, then we could just solve the equation that 3 to the negative 2 times 9 is equal to 1, or in other words, 3 to the negative 2 is 1 over 9, which is 1 over 3 to the second power. That leads us to another general property that b to the negative n power is the same thing as 1 over b to the n power. In this case, let's look at 125 raised to the 1 third power and think about, about that particular amount times itself three times. Because all of those have the same base, 125, then we could use the first property of exponents and just say that that's going to be 125 raised to the one-third plus one-third plus one-third, which of course is just one. So here we've got a situation that we've got this number, we're trying to figure out what it is. It's 125 to the one-third power. Whatever that is, it gets multiplied together three times and gives us a 125. In other words, we're looking for the cube root of 125. And of course, that leads to another general property of exponents. So the general property is that b raised to the 1 over n power is the nth root of, uh, of b. These uh, properties of exponents are easily found. You can just do a Google search for properties of exponents, and uh, you can get them listed for you easily. I'll try and put a summary at the end of this handout as well.